In this video, you're gonna learn how to sound more like Bethel music from the piano at church. We're gonna hone in on three specific sounds that Bethel Music has used on dozens of their most popular songs. The first one is called the Cloudy Piano and Pad, and it sounds like this. Now the end result might sound deceptively simple, but it's really not that easy to dial this kind of thing in on your own. First, you do have a grand piano sound with a nice bit of compression, so it's really warm, not tons of high end. You can probably find that in the hardware or software that you're using. And if you're using our Sunday Keys app, I'm using the Church Grand Studio for this demonstration. Where this gets difficult is the cloudy pad bit. Because the pad sounds so ambient, the default solution or thinking is, I gotta throw a bunch of reverb on this pad to make it sound cloudy like Bethel's. But there's a trick here. The reverb that you hear, the sense of space in this pad, is mostly in the sample of the instrument itself. That means that the original recording of this pad that makes the instrument happen has this big sense of space to it, and you're not just adding a reverb effect afterwards. The result is that you can actually have this pad fade in and out very quickly and be super playable, and you only get that big reverb sound while the pad is being played. So that means you can articulate very clearly the piano parts you're playing and that pad doesn't hang out for 10 seconds afterwards muddying up the mix. That's how Bethel can build up these really ambient pad sounds at full intensity rhythmically, like when they're playing the big, the big build in this song. It sounds huge, but it doesn't build up and hang in the air like a pad with tons of artificial reverb applied would. So that's the first sound, and I've used King of My Heart as an example, but go listen to Bethel's catalog and you're gonna hear this sound across tons of their songs. The second signature sound I wanna talk about, I like to call the kitchen sink stack. This is when they are throwing everything they possibly can at the mix. Shows up all the time in the final bridge and chorus moments of popular Bethel music songs. So a pretty huge contrast between the cloudy piano and pad and the kitchen sink stack. They are throwing everything at these moments. So I've put this together by layering five unique sounds. First off, we have a big ambient grand piano. I'm using the church grand ambient. So that sounds like this. Big, modulated, almost ringy reverb, and that carries really well in that right hand. Next up, you might recognize this from the last sound. This is retro bell pad. And then a big bright pad. This is called big trance pad. And I've also got the octave up effect on here. It's adding an octave above everything that the pad plays. This is filling up all that bright energy space up top. Fourth layer is this pulsing chord arp sound, and I've locked this to the tempo of the original song, which is 82 for Raise a Hallelujah. It sounds like this. And you can hear it pulse underneath. This really gives it that sense, like gallopy sort of energy. And then lastly, it's really common that Bethel will put a huge, huge sub bass underneath the mix, layered in with the electric bass that's being played by a real person. They'll do this with synth as well and double that up. And all together, this is where 
we end up. Now you might think that this sound is very specific to Raise a Hallelujah that I've been playing, but it's not. The kitchen sink stack shows up across tons of Bethel's biggest bridges and choruses. To demonstrate and prove that true, let's go back to the last song, King of My Heart, and I'm gonna play that final big build, but this time we're gonna use the kitchen sink stack. I like to call the third sound the lion lead, and I bet you can guess why if you're familiar with Bethel's music at all. It really doesn't get much more iconic than that. This might be the most distinct sound that I've heard come from the piano on a Bethel song. So there's some really quirky layers here and it might be hard for you to place what exactly is going on, but we're gonna break it down for you right now. First off, you can get this sound with a grand piano sound with a dotted eighth note delay and an octave up effect applied to the piano. Now, if that was intimidating to you and you don't know exactly what all of that terminology means, that's okay. Even if you're not able to nail those exact specifications, you can still get really close. Next up, you wanna layer in a nice bright dulcimer sound. If you're not familiar with a dulcimer, it's a stringed instrument that's struck by hammers, but when you play it from the piano, you can kind of layer it in with a piano sound. This technique is done often by a band called Coldplay, and I think the Bethel folks are big fans of Coldplay's music because it shows up all over Bethel's songs as well. So here's just that dulcimer sound. This is very thin, and there's also a little bit of delay on there, but when we layer it in with the piano sound, the dulcimer itself sort of disappears or just blends in, and the result is that the piano sound sounds big, bright, and like it's just being hit with a hammer. It's this very big, aggressive piano sound. Next up, we have this synth lead sound. This is a bell lead, it's very bright. And it's just got this sort of shimmery, detuned tail. And as we bring up the filter brightness via the mod wheel, you can hear that it doesn't last very long at all. That's because we're playing pretty quick rhythmic parts and we don't want that thing hanging on forever. So, so far we have the piano, the dulcimer, and this lead. And then the last ingredient that I'm gonna add in is this great wide synth bass sound. And that's just to lay down a foundation as I'm playing this kind of riff. It is hard to play this. But the sound is unmistakably Bethel music. Hey, I want to encourage you, if you're watching this video and feeling overwhelmed by how complex some of these parts or sounds or ideas might be, don't worry about it. The fact that you're watching this video and making an effort to improve is going to bear fruit. Even if you don't immediately adopt all of these techniques or dive into all of these sounds, your ear is going to learn and you're going to be able to identify these parts and sounds better the next time you play a Bethel music song. And if you need help with great worship sounds, the Sunday Keys app is a done-for-you solution that will make it simple and fun instead of scary and intimidating. So we'll put a link in the description where you can learn all about the Sunday Keys app. And speaking of the Sunday Keys app, it's what's been creating all of the sounds you've heard so far in this video. The keyboard is just a controller telling the app which notes I'm playing. And 
If you are using the Sunday Keys app right now, we've put a link to this exact set list that features these three different sounds I've used in this video. So click the link on your iPad, it will open Sunday Keys and ask you if you'd like to install a copy of this set list. That means with just a click and at no cost, you'll be able to enjoy these three awesome sounds for yourself. Leave a comment and let us know what bands you'd like us to break down next. And if you're a worship piano player or worship leader trying to empower your team, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.